thread this tape up on here. Now the unique thing about this tape deck, this was the auto reverse one, and I haven't turned this thing on for ages so I don't even know if it works. Um, I think it needs a couple ca uh, couple capacitors in the, oops, the motors, where's the power button on this thing? Somewhere on here there's a power button, okay. Now if I tighten that up it should, it should go into play. That's why I haven't fixed this one. Okay, that's going to be a project. Caps and motors turning. No problem there. This one's all solenoid controlled. So we'll have to take a look at that. Why it's not uh, going into either forward, reverse, or fast forward, or rewind. On closer inspection, I see that the auto shutoff lever has kind of come out. So I think that's why this machine is not going into play or fast forward or rewind because the little switch that detects that the tape is not out is not being activated so let's just see whether we can uh, where did it go did it just drop down inside I think the little lever is broken off inside let's see if we can get the front off this thing and see what uh, is going on which I believe we have to remove the top and the side covers to be able to remove the front I think that's how this thing comes apart it's been it's been a long time since I've actually one of these things up. But we'll take the side covers off it and take a look. There should be some, I think there's some screws underneath the side covers that hold the front face on. Now I believe the screws we have to take out are not actually the ones that are on these. These, these ones just hold on this little side bezel. I believe it's these screws here. These are the ones that hold the front on if I'm not mistaken. It's actually the arrow mark screws you want to remove, and do not remove them all the way as there's a plate behind them, and if you remove them too far, the plate will drop off and will make reassembly difficult. Just undo them a couple turns just to loosen off the back plate. Unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, I thought my camera was uh, running when it was actually in pause, and uh, when I thought the camera was in pause, it actually was running. So right now I'm looking for the little arm, the uh, auto stop arm that had broken off, and it had fallen into the mechanism. So right now I'm basically looking for that piece so that we can uh, reassemble it. It dropped into the mechanism. A couple of years ago I did an overhaul video on this. I think I did a video on it. I did an overhaul on this. You know what? I don't even remember whether I filmed it or not. I hope I did. But if I didn't, I had no torque on the motor. The motor had no torque at all. Both the real drive motor and the main motor had no torque. And what goes wrong on these is capacitors go bad. These ones here, these red caps are all been replaced. These ones have all been replaced. That one was replaced. And there was a big electrolytic capacitor that was replaced with these two here. These are the run capacitors for the motor. I'm pretty sure I did do a video of this. I have to go back and look. But if not, if you're just watching this one and you've got one of these machines and your motor torque is low, it's that big, it's a, it, the original one was a big oil filled cap, double cap, big can that was mounted right here. And I've just replaced it with a couple of, uh, because it's only like a one microfarad, I guess like one microfarad, 250 or 350 volts, um, double cap. It's a double cap because of one side is for 50 hertz, which is selected with the switch here, over on the side here, there's a, frequency selector switch 50 Hertz is one cap one side of the cap and 60 Hertz was the other since this thing's never going to be used in a 50 Hertz country I wired it for 60 Hertz so there's probably a wire in here that's been clipped off there it is there that was the one that went to the 50 Hertz side which was like a, I think it was a I think it was a three microfarad a two microfarad for the 60 Hertz anyway um, if you missed that video check it out if I didn't do it I'm sure I did a video of it though, but I mean, it was a while ago when I worked on this thing. Um, I'm still looking for that auto stop lever and I went back and reviewed the footage and when I when I went to spool the tape up, it actually flipped in and fell into the mechanism, but I have yet to be able to find it. I'm looking through this thing, where the heck did that bar go? I mean, it's not down in here where I would expect to see it, so I've got to find this thing because if there's a metal bar lying in there, it's going to cause a short at some point. So i got to find it before I can... Uh, continue with the repair on this machine. I found it. 
that's where video evidence comes in kind of nice because I, I, I couldn't find it on the floor. I was looking around and uh, you guys probably don't even see it yet. I'm just looking for a pair of needle nose pliers so I can dig it out. It's right here. You see it there? It just dropped in behind here and it's, uh, maybe I can get it with my fingers. There is the lever there. And it just flipped in. And just by fluke it got stuck. That's the uh, the lever that detects where the tape is. It attaches to this arm and this rides up and down on the tape like this. So now I've got it, I have to glue it back in place and then I can get this machine working and that'll, that'll make my day. So I have to take this, um, I guess I have to remove this little C-clip so that I can take this little arm off. So that I can reattach and oh, it didn't even break, it just came off. Interesting. Goes in place like here, I'll show you. Didn't even break. It just it, this just fits in place like this, and I don't know what holds it in place. I think oh, I think a piece of plastic may have broken, or there might have been a pin. I think there was probably a little piece of plastic on the front of this here, as you can see, that broke, and there was a little pin across there that holds that in. But that's okay because I'm going to put some JB Weld on here to hold this arm in place, so that this arm doesn't fall out again, which I just dropped on the floor. So I'm going to mix up, mix up some epoxy. We'll clean this up because epoxy doesn't like to stick where there's uh, where there's uh, grease and stuff. We'll clean this up, and I'll mix up some epoxy, and we'll we'll glue that arm back on like it goes on that way. Yeah, it definitely goes on that way. It just hangs down like that, and that's what that's what to, tells it if the tape is run out or not. And here's why it's always a good idea to work things through before you commit to things like putting things in place with epoxy. Because this has to go in behind some mechanism pieces here and the way that this thing is shaped, I don't think there's much chance in getting this in if it's on. Maybe I'm wrong, but we're going to try and run, put this thing in place. I want to make sure that I'm able to actually get the part in where it's supposed to go with it mounted on here because it may have to be installed after this is on like once you glue it if you can't get the piece in place it's kind of you're kind of hooped right so I'm having second thoughts I think it probably has to be put in place it goes in behind here like this and I'm going to take this other lever out of the way right now just because it's, this one here is going to be in the way as far as trying to put this together. So we'll just remove this lever and spring. Get it out of the way for now. We'll just put it out of the way up like that so that I can work on the position of this lever, but it's got to go in behind. It looks like it goes in behind this other, maybe not, maybe in front. I got I to see the positioning here before I actually go ahead and cement the thing in place, because I may be creating, if you know what I mean, I may be creating more problems. That may be why they had it held in place with a pin, it was because it got put in after the fact. I don't know. We'll find that out pretty quick here. If I can get this. I gotta lift up this little little switch here. Oh yeah, that'll go on. Okay, that'll work. Okay, no problem. I just want to make sure it would fit before uh, before committing something permanent like epoxy. Okay, we'll glue it and put it back together. So I'm just using JB Weld. 
just mix equal portions of it onto a piece of paper and just mix it together and it will turn a uniform gray once you've got it mixed now once the stuff is mixed up you've got about five minutes to uh, work with it if that before it starts to really set up so we'll just scoop a little bit off there and we'll just apply it to the lever here just to hold it in place put a little more on there I need to pull the pin out here so I can get some right into the uh, right into the groove here and then we'll just put the piece in we can put some more on the back here just to hold it Okay, now we're just going to let this set for a few minutes until the epoxy is set up and then we'll work on reassembling this unit. So I'm just going to let this thing uh, sit here for a bit. doesn't take that long to set. It's, uh, it's five minute epoxy so I'll give it 10 or 15 minutes and then it should be ready to go back together. And while I'm waiting for it to set, I'll entertain myself watching my neighbor's three-legged cat that I've nicknamed Tripod. Okay, the uh, glue should have set up by now. It has set up by now. It's nice and solid. So we can go out now and remount the arm. lever goes in just like that. We have a washer that goes on in front of it here. We have a little C-clip that goes on around here as well. There we go. Our tape breakage or end lever is in place this lever here is just to hold the tape out of the way and it retracts when it goes into play it provides slack it also drops the tape down for when you're in fast for a rewind so that it moves the tape away from the heads now these are places of lubrication concern if the lubricant dries out. On this case I don't need to worry about that because that's not a problem at this point. Get your pliers in here and just put our clip back on. Like that. So now we can put the front back on the machine here and it should work. I apologize. I I know I filmed the repair of the capacitors for the motor. And I just went and looked through all my, while I was waiting for the glue to set up there, I just went and looked through all my, my, my videos and realized that it was never published. And the reason it was never published is because that was the SD memory card that I had that had failed. And I couldn't read any of the files back on my JVC camera. The weird thing was that same memory card worked fine on a Sony little point-and-shoot uh, digital still camera but it 
my JVC video camera it never gave me an error initially in fact the error started shortly after that where it started shutting it down while it was recording but I recorded a whole video of replacing the capacitors on this machine so that portion of the video is lost but I think I told you what I did to solve that problem the problem we had on this was there was no torque the motors had no torque the take up and supply which are direct drive motors on here they're outer rotor motors but they work exactly the same as an inner rotor motor there's no difference except for the rotors on the outside and the shaft is going down the middle they're just an AC induction motor and AC motors require a capacitor to the second coil if you need an explanation on how an induction motor a single phase induction motor works there are plenty of videos that will show you animations on how they work but basically a coil of wire with an AC single phase AC voltage going through it your motor will not spin a three phase motor you've got three separate coils and the three phases rotating in step with each other create a rotating magnetic field but a single coil you don't have that rotating magnetic field and how the rotating magnetic field is created for a single phase induction motor is they run a second coil typically it's 90 degrees out of phase from the first and they use a capacitor an electrolytic or usually it's a small electrolytic like this one here this is a little 0.47 microfarad 250 volts capacitor there's two of them here one over here and one here these are for these motors here and there was a big one here which was for the main motor so the capacitor creates a lag in the incoming AC waveform which creates your out of phase or delayed magnetic um, field on the second coil which creates the required rotation to make your motor operate in a nutshell that's how an AC motor works but there's lots of videos if you want to go deep dive on how, how the capacitor works there's lots of videos on that I won't go into scope on that but the big electrolytic was replaced it was a dual electrolytic one of these big cans like this like this one you see up here this is actually the one for the, the amplifier but there was another one similar to this down here and that was for the main motor and these ones here are for the auto reverse to reverse the motor and for the real motors those have all been replaced I wish I could find the source files so I could go through the testing process of it but uh, because I had the schematic and everything out for it when I filmed it but unfortunately that's one of the downsides to recording digitally is that uh, when you're recording onto solid state memory it can be lost in a flash hence the term flash memory but uh, that's why a lot of times for critical work I would use tape I would use tape the memory is probably getting a little more reliable now but uh, some of the memory cards I was using they were uh, not new and I'd used them many times and they just they keep working until one day they don't work okay to put this back on just put the faceplate back on tighten the two screws here that we loosened remember we didn't take these right out because they have a a backing plate on them if you take them out you're gonna have to have a real heck of a time putting that backing plate back on now we'll put the top cover on and the two side panels on and test this thing
the way this goes on. Like that. Yep. A couple more screws on the top to hold the top cover on. And of course the thread in the posts here for to hold the tape, even though it's kind of broken. Plastic is kind of broken on here. At least one side will hold it on. But that's for the tape cover. And now the moment of truth. It powers up. Place the tape reels on. Thread the unit. Better do this right or I'll have all the reel to reel uh, enthusiasts out there giving me a bad time. There we go. It's working! I'm going to clean the controls on this thing because uh, it, it's been a while. We'll check our fast forward out. Before changing those capacitors, that was a problem. This thing could not fast forward and it could not rewind. How about stop? Good, everything's working. Rewind. Yeah, it's gotta like it. Reverse. There it goes. Two speeds. Seven and a half. Three and three quarters is auto reverse, so you can, with the metallic uh, sensors, or the metallic tape on the end here, there's sensors. You place in a piece of metallic um, tape and it'll trip the sensor. So for example, when it gets back to the beginning, if it trips the sensor here, if I just put a screwdriver in there, you see. And the other one's on this side. If I trip this one, it'll reverse automatically. How cool is that? You just placed in a piece of, uh, of metallic tape. Or if you didn't have any metallic tape, you just went and got a piece of tin foil and taped it on to the front and the back side of the tape. Cut it to size and just taped it or glued it onto the tape if you didn't have the metallic uh, sensor tape. Anyway, let's take this tape off. I'm going to uh, get my can of Neutral out and we will spray down the switches on it and uh, clean the controls. And then I can put this thing back into service. So the first switch we're going to give a shot of cleaner to is the head select switch. This is what selects the forward and reverse heads because this unit has independent heads for the forward and reverse directions. I'm going to clean the output switch. Our output pot. This is the playback level. The input switch. That just selects between line input and the DIN input. I'm sure bought a new can of that when I was in the shop on the weekend. On the bottom of the machine, we've got the input level controls for the line and the mic input, so we might as well clean those as well. There's one there. The other one there. And then the two up on the top. And then we 
we should clean our record switches, which are these ones down here. See when I press the record buttons, it moves these switches. Those are just the record play to turn on the record circuits. Because the unit does have separate playback circuits, they actually operate at the same time as the record. So you can play back after your recording. It's called sort of, uh, tape monitoring. So we don't have to worry. It's not, a, it's not a switch to select whether it's in record or play. It's just a switch to select whether the record circuits are on or off. We can just give that a shot. Get the bull back in our eyes. And then there's another switch down here. It also has to be cleaned. That's the one that actually engages when it's in record to turn on the bias oscillator. So we'll just clean that one by hand. And that should have all the switches cleaned on this thing. So now we can just turn it back over and test it again. So this time I'll put the, the uh, head cover back on. So you can see how this thing is supposed to look when it's being used. Oh, it might help if I reconnect the audio line going to my amplifier. Classic reel to reel. And I have I have dozens of tapes that were my dad's tapes. That, uh, it's got some old classic stuff. So like all the stuff's good, obviously pretty old, but uh, he's got some old classic tapes. He's got, got some old bootleg Beatles tapes. Got to transfer those over to uh, to digital at some point, but. Uh, yeah, I got, got a bootleg uh, tape that was recorded in 1964 when the Beatles played Empire Stadium in Vancouver. And uh, from what I remember, the quality is actually not that bad either. But anyway, we'll be hush-hush on who recorded that, but let's just say it was a, a, a well-known, well, he's well-known here, a disc jockey that was Master of Ceremonies or something like that with a tape recorder hidden under the stage, but we aren't allowed to talk about that, right? But anyway, I've got a reel-to-reel -reel copy of it. There's my reel-to-reel -reel machine. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is, again, this is a real nice deck, and uh, now that it's up and running, I'm gonna put it back into my uh, equipment rack. We'll uh, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.